Here we go with this shit again. Hello collectors, and welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2014 poster image version, which is an added bonus, if you want to call it that, to the Japanese collector set for the home release of the 2014 Godzilla movie. The good parts end there. Mostly. You can get the set on Amazon.jp at the time of this review, a link will definitely be in the description, though at some point in the future, you're gonna have to pay a pretty penny because some moron thought this would appreciate in value. I mean, it's going to, but is it worth that high price it will eventually reach? Is it even worth buying a fancy collector set from Amazon Japan directly at the MSRP? Well, uh, enough of the fancy talk to try to sell you on this. Let's just take a look to see whether or not this is worth adding into your collection. Undoubtedly, this Godzilla has an interesting paint scheme. However, it is factually different from the promotional pictures, and quite frankly, they really drop the ball. In some areas, the dry brushing and the shading looks fantastic, while in others, it's completely awful. And the worst part about this is that some areas, they're just gaudy, and they don't look right. And furthermore, the bare plastic can still be seen through the paint. Okay, um, first a look at the head here. You'll notice right away the mouth issue from the general Godzilla 2014 release. The first one is back. You can see that there would be paint bleed for the teeth. And yes, that is actually very, very noticeable in hand. I'm looking at it from, you know, behind the camera, and I'm noticing just how awful it looks. I mean, compared to my 2014, I mean, it's not that bad. My normal 2014, it's actually a little better as you can see, but um, yeah, that's still pretty bad. Also of note, uh, mine, it is not horrible, but as I bring some light in here, you can definitely see that the pupils are definitely not aligned correctly. The right one is straight ahead and the left one is pointed slightly down. I have seen some of the poster image version releases in hand from other collectors, and they're looking into completely different directions. One's looking up, one's looking down, one's towards the back of the eyeball, one's towards the front, so on and so forth. So yeah, it's basically hit or miss there. And something you're going to notice right away from this position is that you can see gray on the jaw. It's not just there. Moving on from the head, the main body of Godzilla features some interesting shading. The color most prominent would be the bright orange found along the dorsal plates and this particular area right here. And it eventually tapers off into the base gray color, which is the actual plastic color used for this figure, and I'll show you proof of that later. Now, for some areas, it's a total hit, like in particular this angle for Godzilla. But for some other areas, like the chest here, it's a bit too overbearing. In hand, too, you can see the grays deep in a Godzilla skin, which looks rather well, boring to be honest, and it looks very sloppy. Looking at the promotional pictures, this was definitely not what was shown. And to be more specific, what I'm talking about in terms of the paint not mixing right and just turning out not perfect on the final product, take a look at the arm, the right one to be exact. It looks like it really wasn't painted correctly because you have this arm over here, the left one, which has some pretty nice shading, nice dark red and orange base here. You can see it looks very great. But then you come over here and it's just like, bleh, charcoal burnt. And you just kind of flip it over and you get normal paint. Kind of weird. And then also you can see here um, the nails for Godzilla. They're very, very, very bright. And as you can just see right here, there's even excess plastic, which, you know, wasn't taken off of Godzilla. So on top of sloppy nails, we even have sloppy molds. And to really show you the sloppy paint, here's a quick look at his feet. Yeah, that's a perfect paint application for a limited edition action figure. Now I, uh, I'm flipping over to this side so this way I can uh, show you this little tidbit here. Let me just uh, take care of this hair real quick, clean it up properly for a review. There we go. See that nice hair that I picked off there? But, um, okay, so that's one. Uh, we have another one here on the chest. I'll go ahead and just remove that. Hopefully it's getting this well enough. Yeah, you can see another one that I have there. See me moving that? I'll hold that right up against the unpainted arm. And then we have another one on mine, on the tail, 
right here. Wonderful quality control. Perfect for, you know, $100 plus dollar action figure. I'm glad this is what I spent my money on. Thanks, NECA. I right, Bandai. Oh, look at that. See, it didn't even come all the way off. Oh, wonderful. Great. Now I got a hair stuck on my Godzilla. Um, so, yeah, um, the tail. Now, aside from that small hiccup with the hair in the paint, the dorsal plate painting is pretty sweet, and the dry brushing looks pretty well done here. And then for those of you who would really need a better look, here's a nice shot at the lower portion of Godzilla's main body. Nice crotch shot for you. Now, to show you exactly what I mean in terms of plastic color, thank God the original 2014 is so easy to pull apart because of the soft plastic. And thank God my poster image version has a loose section right here. So as you can see, this unpainted portion, these unpainted portions are a nice gray, and just looking at these two, you can definitely tell that it looks like this is just a repaint. And a repaint in the sense of maybe they just took other 2014s, the ones that didn't sell the originals, and just repainted them. Who knows? So overall, the paint on this thing is a complete and total crapshoot. Some turn out wonderful. I would actually say that despite me having some issues, including having to pick some hairs off of my Godzilla, mine would be within the top 10% because some just look like absolute ass. The eyes are horrible, the mouth's completely messed up, and the claws and the toes and everything, they look absolutely worse than some others. <sighs> it's very sad because variants like this, I feel, if done correctly and are offered in one particular way, could drive SH Monster Arts fans wild. Okay, they look absolutely fantastic, but this, the execution and straying so far away from the actual promotional pictures, <laughs> thumbs down for me. At least the sculpt is still very, very nice. Now, in the articulation department, it's pretty much identical to the normal SH Monster Arts 2014 Godzilla. The only difference is that this one feels like it's maybe made of a harder plastic, but that could just be a bias of mine at play here. So first up for the articulation, we have the mouth, the jaw in specific on a ball joint. As you can see, you can get it to open and close, rock back and forth, slack jaw. And the tongue is, I believe, on a swivel joint to be specific, but it is definitely articulated. So you can have them look really, really, really goofy. Move that back into place there. The head is attached into the neck on a ball joint, so you're going to be able to twist and turn Godzilla's head, like so. As I showed you before, you can twist it all the way around. And the cool part about this is that the neck is actually on a multi-ball joint system, so you can really get Godzilla to look left and right like that. It's pretty cool. Get him to look up too, and you get him to look straight down like so, with just the neck joints. Moving down from there, we have the shoulders attached into the body on a ball joint. Yeah, there, you get to actually see the ball joint. Pop that back in there. From there, moving down, we have the elbows, which feature a hinge ball joint system, in that the, there are ball joints plugged into both the bicep and the forearm, but there is a little hinge joint in here, which allows the elbow to move, which is nice. So you see you can get that swivel motion, along with the hinge motion there. Then we have the wrist, which is on a double swivel, as you can see here, or a ball peg, as some like to call it. The other arm to move so you can see movement there. It's like so, which is pretty neat. Now moving down from there we have the actual torso joints of Godzilla. We have a ball joint here for this section of the body as you can clearly see, which allows Godzilla to rock from side to side, except for when you're too rough with it. Mine likes to pop off. Yeah. And this joint allows Godzilla to lean down a little bit more. And as you can see here, watch right here, in case you missed it with the first 2014 release in the SH Monster Arts line, you can see there's a little hidden dorsal plate that comes out to at least close up that gap partially that everybody loves to hate on, because gaps are horrible. Now moving down from there, we have the waist joint, at least that's what I'm going to call it, which is a ball joint, which allows you to twist and turn Godzilla like so, which is pretty neat. Ball joint. And mine's loosening up. So, pretty cool there. 
Now, moving down from there, we have the thigh connection at the hips, which, oh, wonderful paint job there. Ball joint, and it features the same sculpt as the original 2014, so these two pieces of the thigh will collide in with each other. So be careful when you're moving them close together like that. Then moving down from there, we have the knee joint, which plugs into the thigh and the lower portion of the leg on ball joints, but there is a working hinge. So you can see you can get the knee to twist and turn like that. But you get hinge motion back and forth like so. And then at the shin calf area, there is a cut, which allows a ball joint to be there. And then moving down from there, the foot is attached onto the leg with a ball joint, so this way you can get ankle rocking movement, and if you really want to, you can get a sumo wrestler Godzilla. Pretty cool. And by this point, it obviously goes without saying that there are ball joints in the tail, all the way up to this portion here. This is one solid piece, and right where my thumb is, the thumbnail to be more specific, that is the last ball joint. So it's pretty cool. You can get a lot of motion. The tail on the poster image version, for me anyway, it feels much tighter than the standard 2014 in that it doesn't feel like it's constantly going to pop off, and I can really abuse it. So much so that if I really wanted to, I can get the tail to touch his head. So if you do get the poster image version, you're going to be able to notice right away that there is a really noticeable difference between the, I guess you could say, tightness of the joints. Because as you can see here, with my normal 2014 Godzilla, yeah, shit's just falling off. And that dynamic pose with the tail is not possible. So it's not really redesigning of the joints, which makes this possible. It has to be the materials, because if you actually dissect the poster image version, you'll notice... All the engineering is the same. So it is a definite plus in that department in that, yay, there is an actual factual improvement <laughs> over the normal 2014 SH Monster Arts figure. Now, in terms of accessories, despite the fact that this figure is just an added bonus to the collector's edition of the 2014 movie home release, it actually does come with an accessory for the figure. But is it really an accessory? It could be. You could use it for that if you really want to. And it would be the backdrop. And here is a nice look at that particular backdrop without the figure in front of it. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Might even make an actually nice poster, too, if you wanted to use that. But, I mean, you kind of ruin it at that point. Now, on the back of it, there's this nice little kickstand. Uh, I'm sure I screwed up the assembly of it somehow. I mean, you just fold the flaps and you pull this down. I didn't want to pull that down, so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it's yours. Do whatever you want with it. Use it. Or don't. Since this figure is just a repaint, you should be able to figure out about how big it is, considering the fact there's enough size comparisons with the original SH Monster Arts 2014. But just in case you would like to know, here are a few size comparisons for you. First off, with some Ultra Acts. Next, some of NECA's Pacific Rim Kaiju. Continuing with NECA and their kaiju alongside some of their Godzillas. And finally, some SH Monster Arts. So, as you can see, like I said, standard 6-inch scale Godzilla here. So, buy it now, skip it, or wait for a deal. You know, I'm going to be brutally honest here. You don't need this. After the original 2014 release, Bandai had a benchmark for what not to do, and the same errors are repeated here. We have sloppy teeth, we have poorly aligned eyes, we have dry brushing and highlights and bad paint mix. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty sad. The articulation, it's identical to the first release, though the material is different. And the whole package, including the discs and stuff, it's pretty nice. But the figure, it's just a crapshoot. Some look great, others are absolutely horrible. Mine's on the good end of the spectrum, despite the issues I had, like the hair and the paint applications, and I still feel some buyer's remorse, even though mine is still relatively good. If you want to get this figure, I would say try to get it as cheap as you can.